is some other avenues too. Uh, is that uh, within every product we have this thing called the info center or communication center. And a lot of times you'll see these little pop up balloons that show up saying there's a survey available, would you like to take it? And what you're seeing is one of us putting together a, a survey that's saying out to all the customers just to get feedback on some interesting ideas that we may have. Um, have them validate uh, what we've heard elsewhere, like from support or from Sean's travels. Are these things of interest? And we ask customers to prioritize them, right? And then we always ask them one question at the end, like, are there, is there any other feedback you'd like to give all of us? And we read all that text. I mean, that's the most interesting part of the survey is to say, here's your chance. You're talking right to the product team. What, would, what do you want to say? And we get the best of good and the best of the worst. Like, it doesn't work this way, or hey, we love it for this. Um, but we analyze all this stuff. And again, by uh, looking at this kind of data, um, and also, another feature of the product is this uh, feedback channel where customers can actually go in and type feedback and send an email directly to all the people on that particular product team. And so we get five or six emails a day. Yeah, actually, maybe more than that. Maybe up to 10 emails a day. And we reread them, re -read them. painful or not. We yeah, read it's them. Just, somebody's got an issue right then and there. They put an email together inside of the product and it you know, goes right into our inbox within seconds. So we see all that stuff and we collect it all. And so over the course of time, you know, we have a really good sense on kind of, okay, what are the what are the issues, the major issues with this product? Is there a performance issue that we need to be focused on? To be, after you day in, day out, reading all this email, getting reports from support, reports from subscription, having people talk in the hallways about the customer site they were just at, we get to feel like to say, you know what, you know, we really need to sit down and start working on the hatch feature. There's just too many people out there complaining about it, and so let's dive and do a deep dive on that. And, you know, honestly, there are issues that get that just don't get solved. If there are customers who say, you know what, you haven't fixed this defect since you know it's been three years. And the reality is, is that I feel for that person. And at the same time, it's like there are millions of other requests that have happened over the course of those couple of years that we have to make our decisions on. Um, and so if nobody else is looking at that issue as a big issue, um, we have to either figure out what is our workaround, can we get a third party to help fix this thing? You know, what can we do to help in, in the absence of a, of a real true fix for that one particular Add some of that. If you go to the Autodesk website, you see this contact us link, and if you select products in there, that gets to the same feedback of the teams yeah. that uh, inside the product does. So, you know, it's a form, and some people think it goes into a robot somewhere, but it's actually humans, and they freak out. Why? But there's there's so many different ways. We will we will go way out of our way to get the feedback from the customers. <coughs> Another example of that is CIP. So when people enable that in our products, we're knowing what commands they're using, what the frequency of it is, how they, yeah, it's, it's important information because we can't always be there behind the users knowing how they use it. We might learn that people use a certain sequence of, of commands always, and then John's team will go, you know, if we just made those into one command, we've eliminated, you know, a pain point and sped things up. Um, there's CER, uh, customer error reporting. Uh, that's a big one because when people used to crash the product or there was an error, it said, would you like to send this to Microsoft? The problem is, what's Microsoft going to do about it? They're not going to fix it. So we implemented the CER so that when you, unfortunately, if you crash, you can send in that information, and it tells us about your system. So, you know, if, if I was to call you up and say, well, you crashed, what driver do you have? What hardware do you have? What graphics card? Where at were you in the program? It tells us that. And so we're able to figure out what that problem is and solve it. I mean, that is one of our top things with, with our, our hot fixes and, and our uh, uh, updates, which are, used to be called service packs, is those CER things. And sometimes it's, we may not be able to replicate what the steps are to get to that problem, but because we're looking at the code where it happened, we might be able to do some defensive software programming around that to get past that. Yeah. And, we, and we are incentivized to, to fix these issues coming through CER. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've been into an exec staff meeting where we report. What did you fix? You know, so give me the entire CR stack and what percentage of the top 25 issues did you fix? And you need to do a lot of explaining if you've not fixed you know, you know, at least 95% of these issues. And so one of the reasons why we are going to this quarterly update for the product is that we want to turn around these CR reports as soon as possible and rather than having customers wait an entire year before the next release comes out and we, you know, they realize the work we've been doing all year long is that once we fix this stuff that we see through CER, the update's out um, and we can keep round tripping that data as much as possible. I've actually called some of the people that are the top 10 in the CERs, you know, when we fixed it in the service pack with the updates and said, hey, we fixed it, and they're like, wow, okay. <laughs> but the one thing I keep telling people is, send them in, send them often. Don't just do it once or assume somebody else will. Send them in all the time. If, you're, if you've got a real problem going, hit that button every time. Numbers count. Numbers count. Yep. Also, put in your email address because we'll, we'll alert you.
you when that fix goes out, if it's in a hot fix or an update, or there may be a, a software developer goes, gosh, I think it's this, but I just need that one little little step. And so they they be able to contact you and go, hey, we're working on a fix. Are you doing this or how are you doing that? Or would you like to try the fix for us? So, you know, put in that kind of stuff, put in the steps, say, you know, um, every time I fire my music player, spin around in my chair, and then type in 10 commands, the 11th command causes the fatal error. You know, that stuff might be important. We don't know, but it, it could help. Yeah, we don't sit in, in, in any sort of tower in Santa Fe. We all have cubicles, and we're completely approachable. So people, we're free to hand out our email addresses or our phone numbers for people to contact us with the issues they have, and we can see what we can do for them. So it's like, you know, we don't, there's no ivory tower about our kids. It's just you know, real human people working on the products, and we respond to them, like Sean had said, through a variety of these different inputs we get. So uh, there's definitely no shortage of, uh, of feedback. Um, I, think, I think we're one of, the, one of the main companies that if you sign up to get participate in any kind of feedback, you'll get overburdened. We will contact you from about six different directions at various times. There's a lot of people that they contact us back and go, oh my God, would you stop? You're overloading me, you know. We're, we can't work for you guys and give you the feedback. So we are really, uh, you know, we can't go out and talk to every one of our 10 million users, but if you want to volunteer and stand up in the crowd and say, I'll show up one of these usability sessions, test drives, do a survey, beta test, all these things, we'll use you. Citizen in a government. We're not a government. We're not that. <laughs> but but you know there is there's a couple of perceptions there because one they don't they may not have a person my phone number which they can uh, so they may not they may not reach out right they may be sitting back expecting something to happen um, or maybe they have that one off weird problem that maybe we just can't address but we can't answer every single thing you know otherwise we wouldn't get anything done. There's, there's a bunch of reasons of perception, and it's, it's hard to control, control perception. Yeah, and you know, honestly, I mean, the part of the parcel to us doing this interview is that we're like, going through a laundry list of all the ways we communicate, but that's not presented anywhere on our website. You know, it's like, there's no acknowledgement through Autodesk of all the stuff that we do for it. I mean, we have to back it up by listening and showing that we are responding. And, but, you know, to your point about is the feedback loop working, it honestly, all the time, probably not. I mean, there are so many different ways to contact us through CER, CIP, feedback aliases, you know, telephones, that, uh, you know, we're constantly trying to you know, respond to this person or that person. And so just being on, there's not one system to, 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 to negotiate here. So there's all kinds of different ways to, uh, to, uh, to get in touch with them, you know, our customers. Yeah, it's fine. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. Thank you.